So what do you do when the subsurf modifier decides to stretch your material like this? Well, you want the short answer? Select the edge loops which form the uh, boundary of that material, hit shift D to make a crease and pull out to make that crease and now you can see that we've tightened that material. That was the short answer. If you want the long answer, stick around to learn more. The subsurface modifier is great. It's amazing. So how it works is basically it, it takes the distance between two points and it averages out the distance to make a more smooth object. Uh, like for example, I have this uh, plane over here which is square and uh, it has four points, you can see that. If I add in a subsurf modifier, you can see that the uh, subsurf takes the distance between this point and this point, it averages out the distance and makes the area smooth and it takes this one and this one and this one and this one. So it basically smooths out the entire mesh and it, it's controllable, it's completely non-destructive. I can add in a loop over here and I can you know, make the subsurf now uh, average out the distance from this to this and then this to this. And because of that, I am able to, you know, create control the shape which the subsurface modifier creates. And it's really great when it comes to uh, smoothing out your meshes. But it's not so great when it comes to dealing with textures because the subsurface modifier does not know the difference between a material and an object. All it knows is that the material is part of the object and it's smoothing out the object by averaging it out. It's stretching the object out. It's stretching the geometry of the object out and in to smooth it out. And uh, the texture, the material is part of this. And uh, right now I have this simple object over here. And uh, I've added a yellow material on top and, and the bottom. And there's a white material in the middle. Now you can see that there is no point, there is no geometry between this point and this point over here. And because of that, the subsurf has to now average out this entire distance. And as a result of that, the subsurface is stretching the material which is coming up to this point and it's stretching it out and making it bleed out because the subsurface is averaging out the distance over there. And it's pretty simple to tackle that. All you have to do is to tell the subsurface modifier that this is the limit uh, where the material has to come. The material should not come beyond this. This is a sharp edge. This is a sharp limit. I'm sorry, not edge. So what do you, how can you do that? Well, one way to do that would be to actually add geometry like this, well, add geometry like this and, you know, bring it closer to that edge and one at the bottom like this. But now you can see that the text uh, material has now shrunken down instead of being a perfect fit. So what you do is now you add in a loop in the in, inside like this and another proximity loop like this. And this works. It's great. But the problem with this is that this is this method is not accurate. I mean, like, it's not accurate. It can't be accurate because it's just an approximation. And it also adds more a lot of geometry, which we don't want. So the next best way to deal with it would be to do something known as creasing. You add in creases to your object. Now, what is the crease? So I have this paper over here, which is rectangular. And now I if I fold this paper like this, I'm making a sharp edge out of it. But if I unfold it now, even though my paper still has the same shape, you can see that now there is one sharp line going down the middle, a crease in the middle. So that's what you're doing in 3D. You're not changing the shape of your object. You are just making a sharp crease in, in the middle. And uh, this crease is very helpful when it comes to subsurface modeling to sharpen the uh, subsurface in certain areas. So you're going to have to select this edge and this edge and make sure that you are in word edge select mode and not vertex select mode. Because if you are in vertex select mode, well, uh, you're going to be selecting the vertical edges too. And uh, you really don't want that because if you have that selected and you do a crease over here, the result is not going to be so great because we just want to uh, tighten the vertical and the horizontal edges and not the vertical ones. So select these. Hit shift T on your keyboard and pull out to make a crease. You can see how much crease you've applied in the top over here. One is the maximum for a crease. So I usually add a crease of one. Now, it was, now the stretching was not so obvious in this object because it was just two colors. But when you come add in a, an image texture, you see a lot of this problem in a lot of beginner models where, you know, the image texture gets a lot stretched. So how do you deal with it? Well, select the edges and you can add a crease by hitting shift e and uh, you can also actually add a crease by uh, in the uh, 
properties panel you know you have some mean crease over here you can change that to uh, change the crease coming to the proximity loops way yes you can make an inset on this face to sharpen this but then again it's not accurate and neither is it geometry efficient so adding a crease is the best way to deal with this and now you can see that while i still have my smooth surface i've added in a crease and now there's no uh, image texture stretching on this object so that's how you deal with the subsurface modifier stretching my image textures problem if you like this video please give this video a thumbs up so that more people can find it let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and also if you want to see more good content like this please hit the subscribe button as that would really support me and encourage me to make more good content bye